Hey everyone, it is, I don't even know what it is, Wednesday, it's Wednesday, it's currently 11.30. I have been driving since 8.30, so it's been about three hours now, a little over, I think I left at like 8.20, so it's been a little over three hours, and I'm almost home to UCLA, well, my second home, home is Vegas, but I'm almost back at UCLA, I'll be there according to GPS, 51 minutes, so I'm gonna do maybe like 20, 30 minute driving vlog. I know a couple of you commented that you wanted longer, but not gonna happen. Um, just because it's pretty hard for me to vlog a long time while driving because I like to do other things while I'm driving just to keep me occupied. occupied. Um, so I like listening to music, like um, I was doing some homework. I was listening to like some homework earlier for my Beatles final tomorrow. So it's just not feasible for me to do long vlogs like that without someone else like driving. Like the only reason I could do that special one hour um, vlog with Kelvin was because Kelvin was there and he was able to drive and he was able to like talk to me and like keep me occupied. But otherwise I can't do driving vlogs for a long period of time so if you all understand. But I have a couple driving vlog questions on my telephones. Oh, what the fuck are you doing? Little car. Your little antennas. Alright, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go on this lane. couple of your driving vlog questions that you put in a previous like yesterday's vlog was it yesterday or the day before's vlog and then um I have a topic that you guys have been requesting me to talk about which is like love relationships advice and stuff like that so I'll do that last I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of questions because they're pretty easy okay um this one saying please answer will you be going to Honolulu Hawaii in the summer Okay, uh, as of right now, no, it's very, very expensive to go to Hawaii. It's like four or $500 for flights alone, and then I still have to get hotels, food, like, adventure stuff, entertainment-related stuff. Like, it's just really not feasible, especially since I really want to go to Tokyo this summer, and Tokyo is, like, international, and yet it's only, like, I found flights for, like, 300 more. So I can go to Tokyo. So we'll see. Of course, I'd love to go to Hawaii. I really, really want to go soon. But it's just very difficult because it is expensive. And I do want to go to Tokyo as well. And just want to travel and do other stuff. And then, of course, I'm not working full-time. I'm a full-time student. And then I like part-time jobs. So it's pretty difficult to save up. Um, so probably not. And then the second question is that I have a crush. And we watch each other's Snapchat stories. Is this a sign or anything? No? Do you, people watch each other's Snapchat stories? There's nothing special about that in regards to love. I mean, it could be, but no? Okay, this is just watching someone's Snapchat story. Okay, next question. Um, in a relationship, advice on social media when that person follows you back or not follows you or views Snapchat stories as just the same person like multiple YouTube accounts like just leaving a bunch of questions on my page because they're all like the same questions but no I don't think that's a sign if someone follows you or not like sometimes it can be like if it's like out of the blue or it's someone you don't really know but sometimes they're just following you because they want to follow you or that they know that you have like mutual friends or people that like also follow you or that you have cool content like whatever the reason is there could be yeah like a hundred reasons for a person following you on social media or watching your snap stories that doesn't mean that they like you you know I mean it could be but there's so many other options you can't just pinpoint on that next person asks what does it mean to do um, what does it mean to do a, a humongous driving vlog will it be over an hour no I just answered that question um, you should also do driving karaoke and a Vietnamese vlog. I do want to do a Vietnamese vlog. I don't know when I'm going to do that. But I'm not doing, um, carpool karaoke anymore because I got a copyright strike last time. So, or a copyright claim, not a strike. A strike, I would have been devastated. But a copyright claim, so I'm not doing that. That's why, I like, when I drive or do driving vlogs, I never play music in the background. And I like listening to music when I drive. So that's why I do short driving vlogs because I can't play music with you guys. Um, and how often do you honk your horn and do people honk at you a lot? No, I feel like you only honk your horn if one, you're trying to get someone's attention for something, and then two, like, if it's an emergency, so not very often. Um, next question is, how do you make driving?
driving from Vegas to LA so easy and not stressful. It was definitely hard the first couple times, but now I'm, I feel like I'm so used to doing it. And I know like what I'm capable of. So I know that like, or like I know which parts of the road or like of the journey, the drive is like really hard for me. Like the first hour is super hard for me because it's literally just a plain desert. So there's nothing to look at and you're going in a straight line. So that gets really boring. So I need like super good music or I'll have like my laptop open with like a TV show playing in the background so I can follow along. Cause that's always the hardest part for me. And then the middle of the stretch, it the lanes merge into two. And then that's kind of fun for me. Cause I'm always trying to like go fast and like, not like fast, but like you're kind of navigating your way through people or like those huge big semi trucks. So I do that and then now the last stretch, like once I get to like Victorville back, it's all city stuff. So like I like just being able to look around and see like, oh look, there's a Wells Fargo. Like, oh look, there's an empty complex building. Like there's a PetSmart, Toys R Us. Like it's just, it's easier to drive rather than just the desert where there's nothing to even look at. You're just like, so just kind of know yourself. And of course know what works for you while driving. Like me, really good music's important and then I'll have some TV shows loaded. So if I need to, I can have them there and I just will listen to them. So like some people like audiobooks, some people like talking on the phone, like that really helps me too is if I get sleepy or if I get tired or bored, I like call someone to talk to on the phone. So just gotta know what you like. <laughs> oh. I was holding in that sneeze till I could finish my sentence. Oh, all right, cool. Next question. Um, can you answer the question in full detail? Are girls always emotional and telling the truth? The Twitter, or er, telling the truth in Twitter, because my crush has been through a lot. Okay, literally, this is like the same person on like multiple accounts asking the same questions about like Twitter, crushes, Snapchat stories. Okay, I cannot explain in full detail are all girls emotional because every single person not just girls every single person is different i know i can be emotional and so okay but see not even that like i consider myself an emotional person but not all the time like i can be very very like strict straightforward like detached from my emotions it just depends on the circumstance and everyone's so different i can't classify all girls as being emotional i can't classify guys being emotional because that's not true there are plenty of guys I know that can be emotional in certain circumstances and same things with girls so no I can't really answer that question because there's no answer for it except everyone is different everyone is unique everyone is entitled to their own emotions and everyone has different emotional responses in different circumstances um, and is your crush telling the truth on Twitter I don't know I don't know what this person is um, people lie all the time on the internet that she could be telling the truth he she could be telling the truth or not I have no idea. I'm not that person. The only person that knows if they're lying or not is them. So, next question. I feel like, I don't know. I love you guys. I love doing these videos for you all. But when it gets to be too much, like, I can tell, like, when a person is just spamming with, like, the same things. Like, when I get 20 comments from all different accounts, in like this in like within a half an hour saying do an hour driving vlog do an hour driving vlog it gets me like a little irritated because it's like i know this is one person like just tell me once you don't have to tell me a million times because i read every comment but i don't know that's why i feel a little irritated right now because like these questions are literally like the same unless you all happen to have the same question but i don't know i'm just I'm a little irritated okay this next person also says hope you make this vlog the longest vlog ever things okay um how to handle long distance relationships because you're graduating within a year but your boyfriend is a junior okay i have no idea i, I really wish i could help you but i've never been a long distance relationship myself um calvin and i will have to do long distance um this summer because he got the internship but it's in santa barbara and i'm either going to be in vegas or in la so that will be interesting but i've never ever done long distance relation like long distance relationships in my entire life so i can't really give you personal experience but i can give you some solid advice that applies to like any relationship and that's one is making sure you communicate with each other like i know a lot of my friends have gone through long distance relationships this car for me is going so slow but you really have 
to communicate with each other. You have to be open. You have to be honest with each other. You have to just communicate. You have to have open dialogue of what you two want, what you two need. Um, what else? Make time for each other. Like whether it's visiting each other or just like having a set thing that you do. Um, to be close, like Skyping or FaceTiming or just doing something to make that distance seem shorter and smaller. Um, I feel like would definitely help and yeah but the biggest thing is communication that can like stem to a million different tips but making sure you communicate honestly open and openly is very very important for any relationship but especially in one that's long distance all right next question what is it like to be in a Panhellenic sorority like DG I feel like someone like me who is not exactly rich or the preppiest would fit into a sorority like that. So yeah, there are stereotypes around sororities that everyone's super preppy and we're all like super girly girls. Um, or that, you know, a lot of sorority girls are like wealthy. But those are all stereotypes by like movies and TV shows that just aren't true. Um, first off, every single Greek life system respective universities are all different like I'm speaking from my experiences like from UCSD and UCLA alone and like I have friends that go to different universities that tell me about their experiences and they're often very very different from mine um and then with that saying like that said Greek life in general everywhere is different but also every single house is different so just because I like okay when I went through the recruitment process for UCSD I didn't like DG like it's not that I didn't like them but I didn't click with them I didn't feel like we connected I didn't feel like I would fit in there but at UCLA I really connected with a lot of girls like that yeah I just really liked and felt like I could be a part of their house so it all just very depends because every chapter is so different everywhere but overall Greek life is so diverse for UCSD and UCLA you have people of all different types of ethnicities backgrounds income levels like religious affiliations like like sexualities like just everything like when you go to big universities like UCSD and UC San Diego or um that is UC San Diego um but also UCLA you are gonna be thrown in a pool of people that are so different you can't stereotype you can't classify it and yes although there are a lot of girls that are preppy and girly in sororities that's not the case like I know in my house specifically like in DG we're super diverse we have some edgy girls we have some rocker moms we have like some like jet set travelers like just hipster girls like we have all types of girls and our sorority is super diverse and that's like why I love our sorority is that we're just not one type of person we're like girls that have very high aspirations and you know we like to have fun and like to support each other but we're all very different so that's one reason I love DG so much but like I said, every sorority is different everywhere. Every Greek life is different everywhere. And my number one piece of advice for any girl looking to join a sorority is go ahead and try. Like, go ahead and go through recruitment and see if you like this. See if you connect with any house. And if you don't, then that's fine. Just Or if you don't like it, that's also fine. That just means Greek life isn't free. Or like, sorority life at your university just isn't the right fit for you and that's okay I have so many friends like you guys know one of my closest friends and like roommate last year Emily she went through recruitment but ended up saying this is not for me but see now at least she tried it so now she knows that hey this isn't for her and like I said I have tons of friends that went through recruitment and decided to drop or went in their house and just like this isn't for me and I also have so many sorority sisters that went through it and love it so it really just depends but my biggest piece of advice is to try like it's it's not gonna harm you you don't have to be um initiated until like a couple months in so you have time to see if you like it but it doesn't hurt to give it a shot so that way you know for sure that this isn't something you want to do so you don't have any regrets so that is my number one piece of advice when it comes to greek life and yeah okay i think this is yeah this is the last question uh, maybe you can talk about the stark differences, stark, <laughs> stark differences between sorority row and fraternity row at UCLA. Okay, so at, at UCLA specifically, 
sorority row is on Hillgard, which is on one side of the university, and then fraternity row is on Gailey, which is on the complete opposite side of the university. Like, it's a 20 minute walk, um, 20 to 25 minutes, depending how far or like where you start, but we're basically on opposite sides of campus. Sorority row is super, super pretty, and like, in literally just one row of like all the houses, and all the like for both the fraternities and sororities they're beautiful mansions but of course the girls are kept very very clean because you're not allowed parties you're allowed to have events we can have like parties and stuff so it's super super clean um we have like every single house has like housekeepers we have our own private chefs which are great and same thing with the fraternities they have like house cleaners sometimes i think some of the houses do some don't and every single one has their own chef as well but the fraternities throw parties um, and they're not in one row, they're like in bunches, which is kind of weird. So they're like on different streets because there's more of them. But they're allowed to have parties, so their houses are like trashed on the weekends. Like there's just so much, like literally just trash. But also just like things are broken, things are just crazy because college parties. But I feel like that's the only difference with like this specific sorority row. And for trip. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the second part of this private vlog, which is gonna be talking about relationship advice, um, my experience, and my advice. So let me go ahead and give you all like a little timeline of my, I guess, love life from like, okay, you know what? We'll start from the very beginning. Let me turn the AC, it's getting hot in here. So I remember my very first crush in um, kindergarten. I actually, okay, it was kindergarten or preschool. I can't, I really can't remember. But his name was Michael, and he was my crush. And then I don't think I had a crush first grade. Second grade, it was Joshua Bettis, Bettis, something, Joshua B, because he was a British, like he was British. It was like, oh my god, this guy's so cool. Third grade, it was this guy named Dylan. Um, and we were super mean to each other. Like, we'd play tag and I'd push him. But, like, when you're a third grader, like, when you have a crush on a guy, you're super mean to him. I don't know why, but that's just a thing when you're super young. It is a process that, oh, I like him. I should be nice to him. No, I like him. I don't be mean to him. I don't know. It's weird. Um, and then I can't remember if I had any fourth or fifth grade crushes. Sorry if I did. I guess you weren't that. Oh, wait. I actually know. Okay, fifth grade. One of my crushes, his name was Henson. And I would go to Vietnamese temple just so I could see him on Saturdays. I remember my friend went to like temple with him and I literally went like three times just because just to like see him on a Saturday because I would see him um, during school. But yeah. Um, and then sixth, seventh grade, eighth grade, people started getting boyfriends. Like, and it was weird or like boyfriend, girlfriend, things like that. And I was just like, any of this this is kind of weird and so it wasn't that like I of course okay I had lots of crushes back then like so many I could sit here and like name them all but yeah I had a lot of crushes but it was more because like I really wanted to have a boyfriend to kind of fit in rather than like you know any other good reason and then it was the same thing for like ninth grade like I had some crushes and 10th grade I had some crushes, but then I realized, like, dude, this guy I'm crushing you on is, like, awful. Like, I don't like anything about him except the idea of, like, being in a relationship with him. And I was like, all right, this is where we gotta draw the line. I'm not looking for a relationship. This is so stupid. I'm just being ridiculous. Because, like, just because my friends had really weird relationships, why do I have to be in one? Um... So that was in December and then it was that time that I just like let go of this desire to have a boyfriend um, Which is when I got really close to John, which was my first boyfriend And we went we started dating in May so like from December to May like I was just like nope Now I'm gonna think about guys, but we just got super close like super fast and it was just hold up y'all I gotta <laughs> make this exit real quick Why you guys like driving vlogs like I would much rather just sit down and talk to you all about this it's safe for one because I'm not distracted I mean I'm not super distracted while talking if it was super distracting I would not do this but like 
all my attention is not fully on the road. Anyways, okay. Um, so yeah, John and I started going out and John is like to this day is still like one of the most like important people in my life. He's like my rock music. I would try to meet up with him this winter break, but he's so busy with his midterms and stuff. But he's literally like one of the closest people in my life. And I care about him so much. Um, but basically we went out for like don't hate me, John. I think like, well obviously more than two years. But I can't remember if it was six, seven or eight months. Two years and like yeah, six, seven or eight months. But basically during that time it was like it was great. Like we were we cared about each other. He definitely was well I mean he still is like my first love. And I care about him, like I said, we're still super close and like you know we're really good friends and I'm always here for him. But we were just so young that I changed so much in those couple of years that we dated. Like, if you think about anyone, and literally anyone can tell you, if they're in college, they can tell you how much they've changed from when they were like a little baby in high school. And for me, I changed so much from sophomore year to senior year of high school and going into my freshman year of college. I changed just so much. And it unfortunately just ended up not working out because of all the different changes. We just changed as people. And it wasn't going to be long term. Now, after this, I realized that being in a relationship is super... It's... Uh, it's a, obviously, it's a really big... Hold on, my blinker will turn off. Okay. It's a super big, obviously, commitment. But the type of person I am, when I'm in a relationship, I give, like, all of myself to the other relationship. Like, emotionally, financially, like, time-wise, like, everything is so... I mean, that's what, you're so heavily invested when you're in a relationship. So, I realized that from that moment after my break with John, that I did not want to be in another relationship unless it was going to be with someone that I can legitimately see myself marrying. And I know that sounds super scary, but why? It goes back to like why I just had all these crushes and like all these guys and wanted to be in a relationship to be in a relationship. It was like, why would I spend all my time, all like my money? Cause like we'd always like treat each other to like special dates and like month anniversary gifts and stuff. And like, I'm not saying I regret anything with John. John was like me, but it made me realize like, I'm not gonna put myself through all of this and then all the emotions that comes with it. Like you get so attached to the person, you, you know, there are highs and lows, it's just a lot. If I cannot see myself actually ending up with this person, if I'm doing it for fun, like people, I don't, I really, really don't understand people who date for like two, three weeks and then like break up. Like, why are you doing that? You should have done the extensive research to see if this would even work for you to jump into a relationship. I don't know. That's just my personal perspective because I think relationships are so important. Like, if you're going to be in a relationship, you're going to be committed. You're going to, like, give your all to this person. And you're going to be the best boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever that you can be or that you, sh you know, you should be doing that. You shouldn't be half-assing it. So that was my personal like that's my that you know it still is my personal view. So after John, I did not want to date anyone else um, up till when I met Kelvin. Of course, along the way, I talked to some really amazing guys and like and just within like that time frame, like at UCSD and like um, my first year at UCLA, like being able to talk to a bunch of new people. I can be in a relationship with Helen because I see 
the potential of us making it like whether regardless of whether we do or not like I do see the ability and like it's there like I can see it happening you know and that's when I was like okay this even then I was like very hesitant because I was like I'm not sure oh you saw your billboard cute um but even then I was still very much iffy because I was just like I don't know I really like I'm almost done with college I don't know if I want to be in a relationship right now because it is going to be a lot of my time it's going to you know I'm not going to be single in college like or my last two years or like year and a half of college or whatever year and however long but I thought about it and I was just like yeah no I I can see this working out so that's when like I was like all right let's do this so it all depends on you personally but that's my personal view is and that's like my love life up till now I gave you a little like tidbit of what I think so now I'm just gonna talk more about like what else I think and that is just don't when you go looking this is like my this is like a piece of advice that I literally give to all my best friends when or like just all my just close friends or even friends in general all the time when it comes to like relationships or like them looking for people when you go actively searching for a, a relationship because you want a relationship or want a girlfriend or boyfriend it's not gonna be usually okay I can't say it for everyone but usually it's not gonna end up well why because you were blinded by maybe who they are like your compatibility their morals they're just all these little details that you don't think about that do make a big difference in the end because you were so caught up in the idea of being in a relationship so like I, I look back to like my crushes in high school before John and I was just like why I didn't find them attractive I didn't think they were like inspirational like super smart or like super passionate or just like had similarities with me but I had a crush on them and would talk to them because I wanted a like I wanted a boyfriend so badly but why like why do that when if that person if you don't really like that person or if you don't really have a lot in common or if you guys aren't compatible why on earth are you trying to talk to them and be in a relationship with them but when you let it come naturally and just that crush and that relationship, like that desire to be in a relationship, comes out of something deeper, like comes out of compatibility, good memories, like just right personalities, like good adventures, just things like that. It changes things. So like the two like most important relationships in my life have come so naturally because I was not looking for a relationship at all. It was you were just friends with this person and everything about them is just so right and that's what happened with me and John and me and Kelvin so that's why I, and, and not only like just me but a lot of my friends like the happiest relationships I know came out of not a desire to find a relationship but just whether you became friends or like you first were attracted to each other and then you went on a bunch of dates like regardless it was it was natural it wasn't forced it wasn't out of nowhere that's those are the best relationships like I literally I think about my roommates like Rachel and Laura and their boyfriends like just everything came naturally like you might not be looking for a relationship but it happens and you find the right person or you find a very great person um, you might not find your right person right away especially because you know you grow up and change like John was still an amazing person but he wasn't the right person but you know what it was still I, I never regretted anything of like it was so great we had a great two years and six seven eight months sorry john <laughs> um and it was great so that is my number one piece of advice is do not go looking for a relationship yeah you might like people who do i know like some of my friends really just want a boyfriend or really just want a girlfriend so they can be a happy couple or like have you know get that experience of being in a relationship but every single time they do that i kid you not it lasts maybe a month two months and then they break up why do that why subjection because breakup is not easy you will cry for days if you know you are the type of person that cries you will you know be it's just a lot to go through for someone that you didn't you can't even see yourself ending up with it was just for fun or because you wanted someone to cuddle with or someone to hold your hand in school or someone to go to prom with or like whatever it is 
that's just my personal opinion and my thought on love and like relationships. Um, yeah, okay, speaking of, okay, so speaking of, that was me in the relationship. Speaking of love, how did you know when you love someone? It's really, really cheesy, but you will know. You will just feel it and you will know. Um, I really, I don't know, how do I describe it? It's the feeling of you wanting to make them happy, them making you so happy, you both being so happy together in a very positive, like non-toxic way. Um, yeah, I don't know, those are just some examples. Um, yeah, well, I don't know. When you experience it, you know, and you'll be able to recognize it like from then on out, but the first time is weird. Um, it took me a while to like realize that, oh, I really, I actually do love John. So, but once you know, it's pretty easy to tell after that. Um, okay, and then the last part that a lot of you ask me is about like, how do I know if my crush is this? Or how do I like, like tell from social media or how, you know, just like marks to your crush or whatever. <sighs> don't like giving advice Pe to you all not because I don't love you all like I love giving advice to my friend but it's because I know the specific situation I know these people and I can give very good advice but like with such an open-ended question like this like I don't know your dynamic I don't know who your crush is what their personality is like how they might receive something how you know how often they go on social media I don't know all these things so I, it's just, you're just giving me like a very open-ended question. So I can't really give any personal, specific advice because I don't know you, the person, the dynamic, everything like that. But just some general question or like general, ge general pieces of advice is there's a fine line between not being able to take a hint and trying, like. You can try, you know, to see if this person likes you or like to kind of get them to like you. But again, I believe in the whole everything comes naturally. But also there's a fine line of you pushing it and not getting their hints or their signs that, you know, maybe they just want to be friends or maybe they don't feel the same way or it's just something that you have to gauge for yourself. And in all, in like worst case scenarios, just ask. Three, there's nothing wrong with being upfront. That way you know. That way you don't have to beat around the bush. You don't have to feel like confused or just I don't know. It's just it's just easy to ask. Alright. I'm very close. I'm like 17 minutes away from UCLA because we hit traffic. Um what else? But yeah, just just ask. Um I don't know. It's so hard. I can't give you all specific advice because I don't know your specific situation, so I'm sorry. But it's hard because at the same time, like relationships, love, like crushes and stuff, it's very complex. But it's simple at the same time. You know. You feel it. You know when a person likes you back. You know when they don't. It's something that you pick up on or that you can't pick up on if you just realize it. So. But at the same time, it's so complex because there could be a million different reasons, a million different factors, but I know you all are smart. You all are part of the Infinity family. So trust your gut. Trust your judgment. Worst case, you ask. That's it. Like, that's the best type of advice I can give you. Um, I don't really have anything else to say. I can't comment on specific situations because I don't know them. But I do think I'm pretty good at giving advice to my friends. You can ask them. They can attest to this. But, um, yeah. So that's it for this long driving vlog. I'm so tired. I just want to listen to some music and finish my drive. So I hope you all enjoy it. I'm going to end this vlog here. This is just going to be a strictly just driving vlog. And then, haha, <laughs> I have a final tomorrow. Ah, so this next, the next vlog is going to be like a me studying all night for finals type thing again. So, but I hope you all enjoyed this driving vlog. Um, you can leave down requests comment once because I read every comment um, but yeah just let me know what future request topics you have um, but thank you all so much for watching I hope this video was somewhat helpful or enjoyable to you to some degree but yeah thank you all so much for watching and I'll talk to you later